Um, hopefully everybody is having a good day. It's a beautiful day right now. The sun is shining where I am. And hopefully everyone had a great weekend. As you noticed, we have had a lot of Tech Tuesdays recently on reporting. And, you know, the reason why we've been doing that is because a lot of you are wanting to get more information out of the system and understand the tools that you have. Last Tech Tuesday, we did a uh, demonstration on how to edit an existing crystal report that's built into your system. And this Tuesday, we're going to do one on how to build one from scratch. Now, crystal can be intimidating. Uh, it still intimidates me most days. But uh, you can get, you know, you can get around it enough to know that, you know, hey, I can do this. I can write these simple reports. Some of the harder ones, you know, you, you'll need assistance with. But in the very beginning, it's kind of nice to know that, that you can tackle this, this crystal beast and uh, write some of your own report. Um, before we start in on that, I also wanted to mention any of you that are going to go to the uh, SAGE Summit this year. If you'd like to let me know if you're, you're registered, we, we could meet for breakfast, lunch, or dinner while we're all there. There's a lot of interesting sessions. Um, they've got a lot of nice general sessions about different, different marketing and HR and management and, and so forth. So you might want to take a look at that and see what they have to offer. And of course, it's Vegas. And as we said, what, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So uh, we'll hopefully see some of you out there. I know at least one person is going. So hopefully we'll see um, some more of you out there also. But anyway, on to our Tech Tuesday. This is a very basic, this is going to be a very basic intro to Crystal. OK? Um, there are going to be some of you out there that have a skill level much higher than what we're going to do today. But you know, you never know. You can always pick up a little, a little uh, tweak here or there that that might help you. But the very first thing that you need to do when you start writing your reports is knowing what table to use. Now, this is one of my biggest questions that we get here: is like, okay, how do I know this is the information I want? How do I know what table to use? So, what you do is you click on your resources button here. And you'll notice that we have file layouts. So we're going to click on file layouts. Now the report that I want to build today is I want to get some information about invoicing or my, my invoices that I have posted into the system. I want to write a very basic report about those. So you've got to think about it this way. Once the invoices are posted, if they are out of the invoice data entry file, well, where are they? They're in the invoice history file. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my file layouts here. And what you're going to see is a list of all of your modules. Now, I may build these out of the sales order module, but my invoices get posted over to my accounts receivable. So let's double click on accounts receivable. And lo and behold, what do we have here? We have all of our files lots and lots of files. So this can be kind of overwhelming when you first start to write a report. It's like, holy cow, which one do I use? Well, rule of thumb that I'm going to let you know right off the bat, anything that has a WRK is a work file. Work files are empty. Do not use these for writing your reports. You'll click on them, and you'll look at it and go, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. It has every field that I need, except it's empty. Those, these are the files that the Crystal reports that are built into the system actually use and get populated when they are run. So that's, that's a little bit of programming behind the, the ball there. So we have to use the other files. So I want to use, I, I want to get some information about my invoicing. So once again, like I said, Mine are going to come from my invoice history header and my invoice history detail. And I can tell here that, you know, I, how does this get populated? Through my AR invoice history inquiry, my sales order journal, my AR sales journal. So this file is going to contain invoices from both accounts receivable, if we post from there, and sales order, if we post from there. Okay? I can take a look here, I can see all the fields 
that I have available in the file before I start and make sure that, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I need. That's, yeah, okay, I want that field. Oh, okay, great. Um, I can also look at my detail file and take a look here to does it have everything that I want that I want to put onto my report. All right. So those are the two files that I'm going to use today for my report. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my crystal. So I'm going to click on my start button and I'm going to go out here to my crystal reports for Sage. And it opens up the program. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to use the report wizard. I find the report wizard very easy to use and I recommend that, that you guys go ahead and use this. So we're going to click on the report wizard and we're going to see the connections. And those of you, you're, you're going to see this SOTA Mass 90. And you say, oh my goodness, SOTA Mass 90, what on earth? Well, those of you who have been with us for a long, 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 long time, and some of you have been with us for over 20 years, SOTA stands for State of the Art, who was the original owner of the Mass 90 product over 30 years ago. Um, they were purchased by Sage probably about, oh my gosh, 15 years ago maybe. Um, but that's why you see the SOTA, because it stands for state of the art. And I'll give you another trivia here. MAS 90, Master Accounting Series of the 90s. So we, we kind of went above and beyond that, didn't we? I'm going to click on the plus sign, and it's going to ask me to open my database. So I'm going to choose my ABC company, and I'm going to put my login here. This is your Sage 100, a.k.a. Math 90 login. And now we see all those tables, just like we saw within the product. So this is where it's asked. I'm on the data tab. So it's saying to me, which tables do you want to use? So I'm going to scroll on down here and get down to my accounts receivable. And I said I wanted to use that invoice history detail, and I want my invoice history header. Okay, so those are the two tables that I'm going to use for my report. And now I'm going to click the Next button. The next screen is your link. The system will automatically link the two fields or the fields that it feels you know it needs to join. There are some things that you can do with linking, and sometimes you know we have to get a little aggressive with linking. But today we're just going to say let the system link the tables for us, okay? Um, and we can get further into linking in a more advanced Crystal class. So we're just going to hit next here. Now, field. What fields do I want on my report? And I kind of do this by, you know, in my head, or I may have written it out on a piece of paper. These are the fields that I want. Well, I know I want invoice numbers. So I can either highlight and then click over this little arrow here, or I can double click either way. So I know I want invoice number. I know I want item code. I would like item description. And I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to choose down, down, down. Let's go a little faster. I'm going to choose quantity shipped. Now, why am I going to choose quantity shipped over quantity ordered? Because I want to show what actually was invoiced for. Maybe the, the customer ordered 20, but we only shipped 10. I want to know what they were invoiced for on this invoice. So I'm going to double click on my quantity shipped. I'm going to double click on my unit price, and I want to do a unit cost, and I want to do an extension amount. Now, I could do a calculation, a formula in the report myself, but I'm going to go ahead, since it's already in, in here, I'm going to just pull the extension amount. Now, that was the last field in my detail table. Here's my header table. And the only thing I really want out of my header table right at this point in time is my invoice date. So I'm going to grab that invoice date, push it on over, but I don't want it as my last field. I'm going to kind of push it back up here under invoice number. Now, can I move it once I get it onto the report? Yeah, I can. But since I can kind of align them, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now I'm going to hit Next. I can also put a group in. Now this is optional. Now 
What do I want to group this by? Well, I want to know what customers have purchased what items. So I'm going to go down here. It's not, I didn't put my customer number in as a field, but I'm going to choose customer number as my group. Okay, and I'm going to do it in ascending order. Now I'm going to go and click Next. Summaries. What fields do I want the system to summarize? Well, I do want to know the quantity that they were billed for, but I don't want to summarize my unit price. It's kind of silly. And I don't want to summarize my unit cost, but I do want a summary for my extension amount so I can get a total. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. OK. Now, under Group Sorting, I'm going to let it sort by customer number. I'm not going to change anything on here. I'm just going to hit Next. And I'm not going to add a chart to my report at this point in time. So I'm going to hit Next here. And I have the ability to select, to put a record selection in here. It's optional. I'm going to handle this later on in the report. So at this point, I'm just going to hit Next. I have no specific template that I want to use. I can actually choose from different templates. But I'm going to say No Template and hit Finish. Remember, today we're keeping it basic. OK, so here is my report. Now, this is great. I got data. That's fantastic. That's, that's step one. But now I want to clean it up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attack my columns. Now, this I am on the preview pane. See how the preview is highlighted over here? I can also go to the design pane. Now, sometimes I prefer to work in design rather than preview. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and work in preview because it's, sometimes it's a little easier to see and, and understand what, what we're doing at this point. So I, you know, my, my column titles look kind of ugly. They're cut off. So I'm going to edit my column titles. So I just right clicked, and I'm going to edit text. I'm just going to come over here with my arrow, and I'm going to take some of these characters out, put a space bar in. I'm going to do the same thing for my invoice number. Put a little space in there. And my invoice date. Kind of shorten that up. And my item code. Let's put a space in there, make it look a little bit nicer. And my item description. You know, so far so good. Not not too not too hard. So we're just going to say quantity here. And take out shipped. And then we're going to take our unit price and just call that price. And our unit cost. And we're just going to call that cost. And our extension amount. OK, so that was all our column headers. Easy. Right click, edit, not a problem. Now, now I'm going to move back to the design tab. You'll notice that we have you know, our invoice numbers kind of cut off a little bit. We've got a repeat on our customer number. Um, I've got multiple types of items in here. I've got regular inventory items, and I have slash items. And then I've got all this, you know, my description and pricing and so forth. So let's go back to, our, to the design tab. And one of the things that I want to, to get rid of, I don't want this repeating. That's a little redundant. It's kind of driving me crazy. I'm just going to highlight it and hit my delete key. Boom. Done. No problem, right? So now I kind of want to move some of my fields over because now I've got a blank space here. So I don't want it all crowded. So I'm going to flip back to design. And I can just click, hold my shift key down, click, click, and click. And I, actually, I'm going to undo for a second because it moved. And I can now, I can come in here and I can move all of these together at the same time because I locked them together by holding that shift key down. If I want to extend a field, notice that we have four little squares. 
when I get to the end of a field, you'll notice that my arrow is now a double arrow. Anytime you have a double arrow, back there, I can stretch. Anytime I have four arrows, I can move. So double arrow stretch, four arrows move. Now I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to move it and stretch it because it was a little tight if I recall. So let's go back and take a look at that. So now I can see my whole date. Oh, but I can't see my whole invoice number. So I'm going to come out here. Oh, and keep in mind, I can stretch it over here too. Stretch. Okay. All right. So any fields that need to be increased also in my number fields. I can stretch that out a little bit too if I wanted to. I'm a little tight next to that quantity field. Let's move quantity over a little bit. And then I can stretch that. There we go. Cool? Neat? Easy? All right. So I moved my quantity field over. Oh, I forgot to take a hold on one second, guys. I got to log out of my phone here. Let's see if it'll let me do that. OK. So um, let's go over there. That won't bother you anymore. All right. So now we've moved our quantity fields over. We've increased the size. And, but I've got my summaries down here rather than underneath the fields that they need to be under. So what do I do? I'm going to do this in design because I prefer over here. I'm just going to drag it down over here. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing for shipped. I'm going to drag it over there. And I don't care if I have the group name there, so I'm going to take that out. Now, I want my, what you're going to notice when I drag it, see I'm not even here. This one's pretty good, but this one's not. So let's go over and take a look and see how I can fix that. If I highlight and highlight, oops, let's undo. Sometimes when I highlight, I move accidentally. So I'm going to right click on this field, go to align, and say left. And that did not work at all, so let's try that again. Right click, align, left. Oh, it's not working for me, that's okay. We're going to undo that. Sometimes that happens. I'm going to just move it over. And there we go. Sometimes it's a little bit obstinate, but we get it in the long run. OK. Now, the other thing that I want to do is you'll notice that in here, I have the customer number. I would like to have the customer number, but I also would like to have the customer name. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our Field Explorer here and click our plus sign, and we're going to click on the Bill to Name, and we're going to pull it over here. There we go. Now, I also want this underline, just like my other one is, so I can click my down arrow here, uh, my borders, and choose bottom border. And I'm going to bold it so that all matches. So that looks good. All right. Now, the other thing is I use my miscellaneous items for maybe I'm giving somebody a credit or, you know, whatever. And I don't want them on this report. I only want to see my inventory items. Well, if I go back to my file layouts, let's find that invoice history detail. And here I have an item type field. And it tells me that an inventory item is equal to a 1. Miscellaneous items are equal to a 5. So that tells me that I want only my type 1 items on here. So how do I restrict the report to know that I only want the type 1 item, items on here? Go to Report, go to Select Expert, 
and we're going to go to record. So it's not one of the report fields. So I'm going to scroll down here, and here's my item type field. I'm going to choose that and click OK. And then instead of saying is any value, I'm going to say is equal to, and I have a down arrow here, and I'm going to choose a 1. Once I hit OK, I'm going to use my saved data rather than refreshing you know, the whole database again. So I'm going to say use saved data, and all those slash widgets are gone now. And I only have regular inventory items. Now, guys, honestly, I'd have to go back and look at the data to see why I don't have a description here. But normally, you would have a description on every line. But that's something to do with my raw data. All right, now, I also want to change my sort order in here. So I'm going to go up to Report. And I'm going to click on Record Sort Expert. And I want to sort this by my item code. So I'm going to highlight my item code, push it over there into my sort field, and say OK. So now my items are sorted underneath each customer. So this is what this customer has purchased. I have multiple dates. Because this is, right now, since I'm using the history file, this is looking at my entire history file, whole thing. So if I have 70,000 invoices in my history file, it's looking at that entire history file at this point in time. Okay, Keep that in mind, because sometimes, for some of you, um, when it goes to get the data, it may take a little bit longer than these seconds that you're seeing here. All right. So the next thing I want to do, this is great. I've got it sorted. Um, I also want to add a, a date range. Because as you can see, this is from 2010, 2014, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to add a date range. And in order to do that, I have to add a parameter field. So I'm going to click on my parameter field. And then this button right up here is my new button. So I'm going to click on New. And I've got to name this field. So I'm going to call this field Invoice Date. And I have a choice of types here. And I'm going to choose date. Now down here in my options for my um, allow range of values, I'm going to make that true. And as soon as I hit OK, it's going to pop up. Oh, no, excuse me. I'm one, one step ahead of myself. So you hit OK on that. Then you want to go to report, select expert, and then record again. Now I'm going to hit my new tab. And I know that I want to sort on invoice date. So here's my invoice date field, or excuse me, select on invoice date. So I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to click my down arrow, hit equal to, choose my down arrow once again. If I have 70,000 records in here, this is going to take a minute to populate. But I want to choose this question mark invoice date. That's my parameter field. Now, as soon as I hit OK, it's going to pop up with, hey, enter my values. Well, most of my test data is in 2005. So I'm going to go ahead and enter, enter that date. And I'm going to hit OK. So now my, my values are restricted to that date range. So if I want to run this once a month or whatever, I can, I can do that, or maybe once a week. So this is, this is great. I mean, it looks good. I've got data. Um, but I'm still not satisfied um, with what I have here because, you know, I really would like a summary by item that my customer is, is purchasing. So I want to create another group. Right now it's grouping by customer number, but I also want it to group by item number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Insert, and I'm going to say Group. And I'm going to choose item code as my group. And I'm going to hit OK. So now my report is grouping by my items. Really cool. Well, almost cool, because I'd really like a subtotal. So what am I going to do? Well, 
I'm going to right click on my quantity field here and I'm going to tell it to insert a summary and I want it inserted for my item code. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. Nice, except I'd like to have it have a, a top line there so it looks like a subtotal. And let's do the same thing to the extended amount. We're going to insert a summary for my item code. I'm going to OK that. And we're going to put a little top bar there. So now I have a summary by customer, by item, by date range of what the customer purchased. Cool. Awesome. So now I could even put, if I wanted to, I could put a parameter field in here, another one, that had me pick the customers. Maybe I want to run it by just one customer. Maybe I want to run it by a group of customers. Either way, I could add that in if I wanted to. But I'm not going to today. When I'm done with my crystal report, I want to save it. So you can do File. You can tell it to save it with the data that you're using. Usually I don't do that. I will take that out and I'll just do a Save As. And you know, maybe um, I've got a special folder. You know, here I've got a Tech Tuesday folder. And then I will call this my AR invoice. How about let's do cust invoice report. Okay? And I can save that. Now, if I'm going to put this report onto my menu within your Sage 100 product, the report name has to also have the word custom in it. So I would actually do something like this instead. Okay. The other thing I want to point out while we're here is every one of you, when you go into Crystal, go to Help, and there will be a check mark in here where it says Check for Updates on Startup. Take that check mark out because what we have found is when that thing is checked on, it makes Crystal start really, 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 really slow. Okay. All right. So here we've got our Crystal report. We've saved it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close it. And I hadn't originally designed this as part of the session today, but I am going to go ahead and add it to our menu. Um, so let's go ahead and go to Modules and Library Master and Setup. We're going to go to Report Manager because what am I going to do here? I want it, I actually want it on my custom reports folder here. Okay, and this is what we're going to do. So from Report Manager, I'm going to say Add Report to Menu. Next. And I'm going to choose Accounts Receivable as the module I want it added to. Then I have to tell it, well, where's the path? Where is my file? So I'm going to click on my file folder. And I actually have a uh, Tech Tuesday folder down here. And here's the report that I just named with the word custom on it. Now, keep in mind, this is a very important note. The report name must end with custom.rpt and be less than 30 characters. So a lot of times you'll, you know, when I'm on the phone with you, you'll see me counting. You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, da, da, da. Has to be less than 30 characters. Okay, so we're going to call this our customer item history. It's going to be the name of our report. And we're going to hit next. And then who, what users have the ability to print this report? We're going to say all. And then we're going to say next. And now I'm going to click on 
finish. Now, I'm going to close out of here, go to my modules, go to accounts receivable, here's my custom reports, and voila, there's my custom item history report. The first time I use it, it may ask me to convert it, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Say preview. Here we are. It says it wants me to convert it. I'm going to say yes. It pops up with that parameter field for the date. Oops, let me get in the right field here. And hit OK. And voila, there's our report again. OK, I have no idea what dates I put in there, but there's, there's our report again. Now, obviously, I still have an issue. I would go back to my report. And, and here, at this point, since I have added to the menu, I would go back and edit my report in Report Manager rather than going back out to Crystal and doing it from there. So I can go to Custom, and I can open it up in Crystal from here, and I can make these fields larger. OK, guys, this was a lot of information. Um, I don't expect everybody to to have grasped all of this, you know, um, in one sitting. And like I said, for some of us, I know that um, you you're way beyond, you know, what we showed today. But for others of us, it you know it's it's a good beginning. It's a good start. It's a good way to 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 see you know how to at least make a start. The hardest thing about writing these reports, to me, is finding the correct table. So if you have issues, you're not sure, shoot us an email. We can help you, you know, find the right tables. A lot of times people will, will call us and will say, well, yeah, um, but that's, that's the wrong table. You know, good, good thought, great table, but it has no data in it, those work tables. Um, so this was your intro to Crystal. We are going to be doing another um, uh, seminar or webinar here pretty soon on the SAGE intelligence program that's built into the system. It is another report writing program that is not necessarily intuitive, just like Crystal is not one of those that you can, you know, get, you know, just sit down and start whacking out crazy wild reports. Um, but we'll be doing another one on the Sage Intelligence. That product was originally written or acquired by Sage in order to replace FRX, which is a financial report writer. The majority of us use the standard reports in General Ledger, and they're fine. But some of us need FRX. I will tell you that Crystal is a very difficult program to write financial reports in. So you probably want to stay away from doing that in Crystal. But um, this Sage Intelligence also has a connector to other modules. So you, it's not just limited to financials. You'll be able to write reports uh, and link them to the other data and other modules if you have the connector module. But in the meantime, I want you to start playing with the crystal. You know, if you've got a quick and down and dirty and easy report you think you might want to try, go ahead and see what you can pull out of there. Remember, you also have your Excel queries, and we also have our lookup wizard where we can push data out to Excel. But sometimes, you know, a, a crystal report is just something really easy to do when we have, um, you know, something that we need to get out very quickly. Uh, in the past, we have um, written some very intense crystal reports, and they can get very, very, very difficult um, and very, very complex. And, and getting some of your data out. Now, we have a question here. Will the intelligence allow us to combine data from multiple mass companies? And the answer, drum roll please, yes, it will. So I, I, can, I can actually feel somebody jumping up and down clapping his hands right now. So, um, but yes, that we can do multi-company consolidation for your financials in the intelligence program. Uh, Suzanne is is the person who has taken over for Stacy, and she is 
learning uh, intelligence right now, and actually she's, she's got a pretty good feel for it already. So she will be putting on a webinar within the next couple of weeks. Uh, one of the webinars that we're going to be putting on shortly, too, will be what's new in 2013 and what's new in 2014. Those of you are, uh, some of you are, are just now getting onto the 2013, some of you are just now getting on the 2014. Um, I need to tell you that um, version 4.4 is going to be phased out as far as SAGE supporting the 4.4. Uh, this year, but as usual, we will support any version that you guys have as long as we can we can do it. So we we actually still have some people on four three, and maybe one or two versions prior to that. So anyhow, that was my crystal for the day. This is your Tech Tuesday for the day. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, definitely please shoot us some emails, give us a call. And we look forward to talking to you again in the next couple of weeks. Hope you all have a good day. I will send out this information because I know you're going to be clamoring for it. I'll send out the Tech Tuesday documentation a little bit later on today. You guys have a good day. That's all for now. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.